all right, stop playing with yourself because the more you're giving yourself grace, it's like you're honestly only pushing yourself further and further back from the goal that you're trying to achieve and it's only hurting yourself it may sound cute and all cool like oh i'm giving myself grace i'm not gonna work out today i'm giving myself grace but like you're gonna grace your ass right into the same place or stay in the same spot or gain more weight hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Sierra, and here on my channel we're all about creating a life you love so with that being said we're gonna hop into today's video so as you can tell by the title today we're talking about how i'm getting real with my weight loss journey with you guys today and honestly i'm down 56 pounds but if i had to do this all over again um i would do think i would do things a little bit different i feel like Weight loss can always seem very like black and white and people come on here and talk, you know, calorie deficit, calories in, calories out. These are the workouts you need to be doing. But I feel like weight loss is so much more nuanced than people even realize. Um, it's so much more of an emotional journey than just it being, oh, this black and white fact. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about like some things that I would change that are just outside of the typical calories in calories out definition, because I feel like there's so much transformation that happens in your body mentally, spiritually, and physically throughout this journey. And I want to share that with you guys, because I feel like knowing these things might actually make the weight loss journey a much more fun and experience versus oh, this is a chore. I have to do this because I hate my body. And that's not a way to kind of look at the situation because if you look at the situation as to I'm only doing this because I hate my body, how long will that actually be sustainable? Like you have to be able to, you know, do it for a reason and do it for you. So first things first is I want you guys to think about what is the moment? What is the moment to where you kind of just sat back and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to feel like this anymore. I don't like how I look. Um, like, what was the moment that you had that you're like, yeah, this weight has to go. And honestly, I feel like I've been on this, this weight loss journey, like on and off my whole entire life. Um, not even gonna hold y'all up. I mean, I was a chubby kid. So I kind of feel like I've always fluctuated up and up, up and down, but never like down to a real extent. I feel like I've been at an average mid size before, but never like to the point to where I am now. Like I would consider myself fairly small right now. My highest that I've ever been was 210 and right now I am 135 and I love that for me. And if somebody wants to experience that same kind of transformation, you have to figure out what is your breaking point? Why don't you want to do this anymore? And it has to be for you. I feel like whenever I had weight loss in the past, it's been honestly from like breakups. So it's always been on like some revenge body type of like ish, like for real, for real. Like the moment I probably lost the most weight and I had got down to like 153. It was literally after breaking up with like my college boyfriend. Like I was being very dramatic. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to be a baddie, all this other stuff. And it was like, <laughs> I think I was so obsessive with like trying to lose weight I ended up talking to this this guy like shortly after who was like very into like the gym and lifting weights and all this other stuff so it was almost toxic because he would always say like oh my god you look so good like you're you're doing a good job like and we would go to like the gym together and then honestly I got into the conversation with him and he started like getting me like on protein and like creatine and the thing is that type of stuff, I feel like, has to be done under somebody who is super disciplined and honestly not under people who have struggled with weight. And I'll tell you guys about that a little bit later um, in a point that I have down here, but I'm going to just tell you this right now. If you're a person who struggles, who has struggled with weight loss for a very long time. I will hold off on these muscle supplements. And I'm specifically talking about like creatine because online they'll tell you take creatine. It'll make your butt big, but like it'll make everything big. So be mindful of that. 
But anywho, I just want you guys to really figure out your why and your how because this is an emotional journey. And if you don't have a reason to why you're doing it, it might not be sustainable. It might not be enjoyable. It might just be like a not pleasant experience. So figure out your why and figure out your how. This is the only part where I feel like I'm really gonna talk about the whole science of it. And that is figure out your calories. Um, I have a video where I talk about how to find your calorie deficit for short girls. I am 5'2", and that is very short in perspective to like calories. Um, there are lots of people online who will say, oh yeah, you need to eat for your gains or 1,200 calories is not enough for even a toddler. But when you think about it, 1,200 calories is what short people probably should be eating. They tell you it's not sustainable because they are much bigger and much taller and their body needs all of that. And the thing is like, if you continue and continue to go over that and eat more than that, I was talking to my doctor and she told me like your stomach is like a memory kind of like sponge. So it's like the more and more you stretch it out, like it's going to get comfortable being stretched out. So you're going to feel hungrier naturally. But the good thing about your stomach is it can stretch back in. So if you start to limit and proportion your meals out, your body, your your stomach, your actual stomach where the food goes will shrink back to normal size and you'll be able to feel, you know, when you're actually full. Because the thing is, like we eat so much and so much and we continue to stretch that stomach. At some point, you're not going to know like when it's time to stop. And that's important to know in the weight loss journey, just because like, if you don't feel it, like you're probably more than likely overeating. And that's why it's important to know like your science, know your calories, like know your calorie deficit. Um, I actually have a method that I kind of figured out. I don't know if it's going to work because I've been using ChatGBT all day today, but use ChatGBT to figure out like your calories. Um, I have a video talking about it and using an actual calculator, but I actually just figured this out here lately. And so say um, I, so, okay, let's just do this. So say I am 135 pounds. My activity level, and I'll put the prompt here on the screen. You guys can screenshot it and then just copy and paste it into um, ChatGBT and then you can add in your own information. Matter of fact, I'll put the prompt in the uh, description box. This is a very small goal, honestly, like, Okay, so this is the prompt. I'm 135 pounds. My activity level is fairly stagnant. I work a desk job. I do exercise three to four times for an hour. I would like to weigh 120 pounds. How many calories do I need to eat every day and burn every day by activity to be there by December 31st? So something that you guys need to also put in this prompt is put... Um, your age and and your height. I forgot to add that in here, but since ChatGPT knows me so well, um, they did put it in here correctly. I'm assuming. Oh no, they put five five. So I am five two. Okay, let's see what it gives me. So then it calculates everything. It gives you your BMR, which may be or maybe not accurate. It really depends on your body. It, calculates your TDEE, -E, your total daily energy expenditure. It calculates your calories needed for weight loss, your daily calorie intake for weight loss, your exercise contribution, and then the summary. So it says my daily calorie intake, in order for me to get to 120 pounds by December 31st, I would need to eat 1,375 calories per day, and then burn 300 to 400 calories per session three to four times a week, and I will be at my weight goal by December 31st. Now, I am gonna give you guys this prompt all over again because I might have not said it correctly, so I'm gonna make sure I put it down in the description, and I'll also include a screenshot so you guys can copy and paste that way as well. But that way, that gives you a clear number on what you should be doing because I even feel like when we do the calorie when we do the calorie calculators online 
they give you like, okay, yeah, you need to eat these many calories, but they never give you how many calories that you need to be burning from exercise. And I think that is the important part because we can track our calories all day long, but if we don't know an estimate of how much we're actually burning, like we don't really know what the heck we're doing. So get a number, use ChatGBT because ChatGBT is my personal assistant. You need to make it your personal assistant today if you have not. So yeah, so figure out your science. And honestly, once you get this number, see if it actually works. So like do this for a week straight. See if you lose any weight. If you lose any weight, continue to do it and then taper down as you lose weight. So I would reassess you know, again, like once you lose maybe like five, like five pounds, go back into ChatGBT, give it a new weight, give it your activity level, give it your height and your age, and then recalculate it so you can get to your goal. Um, because the calculation has given you it based on what you weigh today. But it is always kind of good to check back in because a lot of times in the weight loss journey, we do plateau out once our body is kind of used to doing something for so long. Tip number three, um, and I actually have a video on this as well here on my channel, is stop giving yourself so much grace. Um, I feel like God give us grace throughout life, but if you truly want something, you cannot give yourself grace every single time. Okay, sure, you had a cheat day. That's fine. But like you can't have a cheat day every day. And I, I'm guilty of this. Like throughout like weight loss journeys that I've had in the past, if I went out to eat, I'd be like, oh, I guess it's a cheat day. I guess it's a cheat day. And if you're always going out to eat, like in these cases, I think this was like when me and John first started dating. Like if we're always going out to eat, it cannot always be a cheat day. I cannot always get French fries. And I cannot continue to give myself grace through that because it's like those French fries every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are going to add up. So be realistic. Like, okay, you can give yourself grace maybe one or two times, but then at some point you have to be like, all right, stop playing with yourself because the more you're giving yourself grace, it's like you're honestly only pushing yourself further and further back from the goal that you're trying to achieve and it's only hurting yourself. It may sound cute and all cool, like, oh, I'm giving myself grace. I'm not gonna work out today. I'm giving myself grace. But like, you're gonna grace your ass right into the same place or stay in the same spot or gain more weight. And I'm, I'm being very real and raw here because we live in a world to where like people are too soft on themselves. People are too soft on each other. And I understand weight loss holds like a mental aspect and it can cause people to like freak out and binge out and stuff like that. But if you want something, you have to make the commitment and stick to it. And it is as simple as that. And I'm not trying to be mean. That is real like big sister advice here. You have to learn when, okay, when is it enough? Like, when is the grace enough? Like, God has given you grace, but that doesn't mean you give yourself grace every time and you're going to, you know, mess up every single day because that's not how it works. Because at that point, you might as well just not do it. Like, honestly, stop listening to people who do not look like you. And when I say look like you, um, I mean, maybe a person who is way taller than me. I mean, maybe a person who is a man, maybe a person who has never had a thyroid problem a day in their life, maybe a person who has never had PCOS, maybe a person who has never even struggled with weight loss. I feel like the problem we have here online is people... Once they get their dream body, everybody feels like, oh, I'm a trainer. I'm a coach. I want to, you know, help people. And even with me, I would love to help people throughout their weight loss journey. But I do think that I offer a unique experience because I'm a person who has struggled with weight their entire life. So I can come at it from a different perspective from a person who has like, oh, I had a, a little gut for a second. And then, you know, I started lifting weights and everything just worked itself out. But like if someone who truly struggles with weight loss for their entire life or like for years, there is some mental things that have to be taken care of before you probably can even start the journey just to even be transparent. Even aside from the whole mental aspect of weight loss, I had a thyroid problem a few years ago and I gained like 40 pounds in the span of a few months. And if you go talk to somebody who's a trainer or a doc, or even a doctor who is not like an endocrinologist, they may tell you, oh, you're just eating too much. You're just eating too much. And the thing is like sometimes these people have changed nothing about their diet, nothing about their activity, 
their body is out of whack. Their hormones are out of whack. And just especially as a woman, we have different hormones than a men. So I don't think scientifically we can follow this simple, strict cookie cutter rule. Like our lives are nuanced as women. We are different people every week of the month. We have our menstrual phase, we have our follicular phase, we have our ovulation phase, and we have our luteal phase. That right there is different hormones throughout each week of the month. So you should be eating different during that time of the month. You should be training different during that time of the month. So it is not essential to listen to people who don't follow that same kind of tactic because what it is going to result in I mean, well, this is what it resulted in for me. And I'm not going to say this happens to everybody, but I was working out with a male trainer and, you know, this is how he did it. Like he was weight training heavy multiple times a week, but I was weight training heavy and it ended up raising my testosterone. I started having hot flashes. I started breaking out in hives and then I honestly just started gaining weight. It wasn't muscle. It was fat. My body was super inflamed and just out of whack and freaking out because my body did not need to do heavy weight training every single day. I had to figure out, you know, something that worked for me. And that kind of brings me into my next point. And that is find an exercise plan that works for you. Even to this day, throughout this weight loss journey this year, I, sh I did Pilates. I want to say I quit Pilates around like March because it was it was just expensive so I did Pilates last year from like August to I want to say March I feel like it did work on like my small muscles muscles that you probably wouldn't see if you have like a lot of fat on top of them quit Pilates and then I just solely focused on a calorie deficit and cardio and if you get online, people will tell you, do not do that. They will say prioritize like strength training and protein. And like, yeah, you should. But at the same time, you have to know what works for you. And honestly, I could not focus on weight training because mentally, if I saw the scale like going up or if I was getting puffy and inflamed from lifting heavy weights, my brain could not handle that. And that might have sent me into a binge spree. So I found out, found a workout plan that worked for me. And that was just focusing on cardio for that season. I took before and after pictures from January. And then in August, once I saw my August picture, I'm like, okay, you have lost a substantial amount of weight. It is okay for you to introduce weight training. And when I say weight training, I do a YouTube video three, two to three times a week. And I have seen such great muscle growth in my arms. I got like little abs, like I am in such a great place, but it does not cause my body to have a high cortisol effect. It does not cause my body to go like into stress. I don't get puffy. And the thing is, this workout is a very low impact. They use only five pound weights in the video. I started off with five pounds, but like every month I've been kind of going up in weight. So I w went from five, then I went to eight pounds. Now I'm using like 10 pounders, still a struggle. So I'll probably continue 10 pounds next month as well. But I'm seeing so many positive changes in my body, but I'm not overdoing it. I'm not at the gym, like doing heavy, heavy weights. I'm doing low impact workouts in my living room and it's working just as good as a person who may be lifting weights six six days a week, but that's what works for me. I do like sometimes cycling um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's like you have to find an exercise plan that makes you feel good, that you enjoy, and that you're going to continue to do. Because the thing is, like, I was doing this, you know, weight training, but it was not making me feel good, y'all. I was like breaking out in hives, like, and just puffy, just swollen, like just looking crazy. And when I say don't take advice from like people who don't look like you, like I mentioned in the beginning, I was talking to a guy and he had me taking like creatine and um, like heavy protein. And the thing is like, just because this person can eat five peanut butter sandwiches and do three protein shakes and they have boom, they have muscles in a few weeks. That's not going to happen to you if, one, your hormones aren't the same. You don't metabolize those things the same. It's just like it can set you up for a disaster listening to advice from other people. And when you do things like creatine, your body has to be, 
I want to say, not your body, your diet needs to be like in tip top shape because those type of things make you like retain water, make you more hungry. Weight training makes you more hungry. So you have to have like a lot of other things in check before you start to introduce these like muscle like supplements. And I'm just being transparent here because you will hear creatine online so much as like this great thing and it's going to make your so fat and so big and yeah you're right my butt was huge but so was my belly and my arms because I was retaining water like crazy which played on my mind so I'm saying guys take advice from people with a grain of salt don't try everything you see on the internet and I know that's self-explanatory but usually when people want to lose weight they're usually desperate and they will try anything and I'm saying this from my own experience so yeah okay so next thing that's going to take me into is discipline and consistency and when it comes to you know weight loss or any kind of journey it takes you to be consistent but the thing about like consistency you may think oh yeah I'm extra motivated at this point in my life so I'm able to be consistent because I'm extra motivated But the thing about motivation, motivation is very fickle. She is a fickle lady and she comes and goes as she pleases. You're never going to be motivated every single day of the week, but you have to rely on the discipline and having a consistent schedule to help build the habits. So you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing on this day exactly. So that way your body just falls in line. So now if I don't work out, like I didn't work out this morning because I had an eye appointment. I honestly feel weird because I have not worked out yet. And it's because my body is used to getting up every day and going to do some sort of workout, whether it's the workout in my living room with my weights or it's going to the gym or going to my fitness center and getting on the Stairmaster. Like my body is used to doing that every day. And once I'm actually done filming these videos, I'm going to go downstairs and go work out. But like I said, my body relies on that consistent schedule I have. It relied on me building up the discipline to make these habits so I can continue to do this even when I don't feel like it. Because there are plenty of days when I don't feel like working out. But I always feel so much better when I just do it. Like you're never going to regret working out. You're going to regret not working out, but you're never going to regret actually going to do your workout. I promise you that. So after like you've got your consistency, you got your discipline, like you got that down pack, you really have to start to think about this as a lifestyle. Like this is a privilege. And you know, when it comes to weight loss, you have to treat your body good. The privilege is you are treating your body good And in return, your body is going to make you feel good. You're going to look better in your clothes. You're going to look better in your skin. You're going to be glowing. You're just going to show up as this confident person. But that comes with making it a lifestyle. So when I say making it a lifestyle, I mean like, okay, instead of going out to the bar to get food, how about we go to the salad bar? We go to Sweet Greens. Or even if you do go out to a restaurant where they don't have like, where it's like bar food, Find healthier options on the menu. If you're a person who likes to drink alcohol like me, maybe get you like some of those Mio or Crystal Lights. Get you some tequila, get you like some soda water and add your own flavor. Because a lot of times when it comes to like drinking, it usually adds up from the juice because I want to say a shot of tequila or something is only like 60 calories or something. I mean, 60 calories added up with like six shots or something is crazy. But then say you're doing six shots and juices and stuff with it. But if you pair that with a zero calorie drink, you might be, you know, fine. And I know we're talking about a lifestyle and being healthy and alcohol is not considered healthy, I would say. But you can make, you know, the alcohol experience less calories. Um, And even just when it comes to just showing up for yourself, like it's okay to make a pan sheet of vegetables and just load up on vegetables. It's okay to start your day with a smoothie. Like you have to fall in love with being this healthy chick. Like that is what it is all about. Because what people will tend to do, honestly, is kind of shame you and they'll do it in a joking way they're like oh you eat rabbit food you eat like you're too small or you're too this you're too that I don't know how you eat that stuff it's not good but it's like okay but this is your lifestyle and it makes you feel good so honestly you have to learn to say 
F the haters like in real life. And just because they are not disciplined to where they can learn how to make healthy alternatives for themselves, that doesn't have anything to do with you. This is your life and you need to make this a lifestyle that is sustainable to you. Make this uh, um, the position this position this in a way to where it's like it's a privilege you have to think of it as like it is a privilege that I'm able to put good stuff in my body it is a privilege that I can wear these great clothes it is a privilege that I can feel this great a privilege of the lifestyle that I set myself up for and that is the important part because when you think of things like oh it's just the diet oh it's just 75 hard like those things have hard end stop dates but when it comes to a lifestyle, you you implement it and incorporate all of these things in other aspects of your life. Like I just mentioned, like if you are a person who like goes out to drink, make it a healthy experience. Like you have to make this a lifestyle, even if it looks different than other people. Like I was just talking to my friend um, and I was telling her like she asked me, was it like crazy to take her meal prep? back home, uh, back home to her hometown when she goes home to visit. And I'm like, no, it's not crazy. I used to watch Amber Martin here on YouTube and girl says she used to take bananas and grapes to the club with her. When I say it's a lifestyle, that's how deep you have to get with making your conscious choices and decisions. Like there's not going to be, there's going to be time and spaces to when the environment is just not set up for you, but you can always prepare yourself. And that comes with making this life a lifestyle. Next is the most important thing of them all. Like this kind of goes hand in hand with lifestyle, but you have to show up as the person that you want to be. And that can be so much easier said and done in the beginning, but you really have to learn how to visualize, visualize this healthy lifestyle, visualize how you want your clothes to fit, visualize the emotion of how you actually want to feel. And if you're a person who kind of like struggles with visualization, I say make a Pinterest board, make a Pinterest board, of, make a Pinterest board of bad And I said, I'm trying not to cuss because my grandma watches my video. So I'm going to bleep that out. But make a Pinterest board full of bad that you want to look like. Nice bodies, nice butts, nice waist, flat tummies, eat healthy meals, smoothie bowls, snack plates, pan sheet vegetables. Like, look at that stuff. Make a Pinterest board and just watch this stuff. Watch it like if you're in a weak moment. Watch it while you're working out. Watch it while you're in the sauna after your workout. Like, get into character get into vibration like the more and more you look at this stuff and feel it and get into the vibration it's going to happen for you and then at that point once you you're able to get into the vibration you simply just have to start acting as if all right so Lori Harvey does Pilates I'm going to a Pilates class all right so this person eats a sweet green salads I'm going to sweet green and I'm getting me a salad like when I say show up as the girly that you want to be that's what you have to do show up as the skinny bitch you want to be like you have to show up for her and you have to make her show up and show out to where like honestly your inner fat person and I know fat is like a controversial word but like you got to silence that inner fat person in your head because even once you get to a place to where you like you are that person you're in the body that you want that inner fat person still might be in the back of your head so sometimes you got to really just I feel like throughout this process learn how to quiet that because that voice is just trying to take you back to a place to where you feel comfortable where it is easy it is easy to eat unhealthy it is easy to go out and get french fries it is easy to get fried pickles it is easy to you know get cocktail drinks to where it's all mixed and it tastes good like that is easy what is hard is to get up and have a smoothie instead of a pancakes or something like that. It's hard is to actually get up and move your body when you don't feel like it. Like this is a journey that really takes some hard like strength mentally. But honestly, you can do it, y'all. It's, it's all about the mindset. It's all about the brain. So when I say show up as the girl that you want to be, put that in the front. Put that in front of everything that I just said. 
But like you also have to take into account all of the other tips that I've given you because that will help you embody and show up as the girl or the man that you want to be. And some things that I've learned throughout this journey is I've learned to fall in love with taking care of myself. I love cutting up vegetables and making me a pan sheet of vegetables. I love making me a cute little smoothie. I learned to really learn my hunger cues like I used to eat to a point to where I was literally always always stuffed to capacity and honestly that's not a good way to feel it's not good to go to sleep feeling like you're stuffed and your stomach is about to burst open like I learned to know when to stop eating when to put the fork down another thing I really learned throughout this journey is learned how to cycle sync I mentioned And the tip where I talked about you can't take advice from all people and like men probably don't know anything about cycle syncing. Your body needs different foods during that time of the month. Your body needs different levels of activity in in whatever phase or cycle that you're in. And that it is important to having a healthy whole body. That is important to having healthy hormones. Honestly, once you start to cycle sync, you probably won't even have long, heavy periods anymore. You won't have these crazy cramps anymore. My period comes in easy and effortlessly just from simply cycle syncing. So it is a game changer, but it is all about like making this a lifestyle. It is a privilege to treat your body good and you should treat your body good so you can be here as long as you can. So these are some things that I wish I would have led with when it comes to my weight loss journey. And if I had to do it all over again, these are some key points that I would keep in my back pocket at all times. Because when you get online, you're gonna see what I eat in a day, what kind of workouts I do, but like it is bigger than all this. Like I said in the beginning, this weight loss is a nuanced topic. It is not black and white. Weight loss is going to look different for every single individual. Everybody's experience is gonna be different. Some people are gonna lose weight way faster. Some people are gonna lose weight way slower. But the important thing is that you make this a lifestyle. You be consistent. You have the discipline because motivation is gonna come and go, but you want to feel comfortable in your skin. You don't wanna be running away from the mirror and things like that I had got to a point to where I'm like I'm 30 I'm about to be married I'm tired of hiding in pictures and things like that so it's time for me to get comfortable and be happy in my skin so I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye Yeah, she making that shake, breaking that bait till the bait break.